cuts, 100 games. In honour of that, we thought we'd put together a comp designed to give you the chance to win the top 10 games as voted by the Zone review crew. All you have to do is write in with your top 10 games for 94 and the first correct or closest entry to that of our reviewers will win those games. We'll draw the winner in two weeks, so you've still got some time to make your decision. To help you make that decision, here's some of the games that are in the running. NBA Jam. I'll say it again, guys. NBA Jam. I'll also say, shake the room, because that's what it did to the Zone Crew. Put it at the top of your list and you're on your way. Other games in the running are Virtual Racing, The Turtles Tournament Fighters, Skitchen, Rock and Roll Racing, The Legend of Zelda, Clay Fighter, Madden 94 and Super Metroid. Don't forget PC games though, because they're part of the comp too, and we've played some killers. Star Wars Rebel Assault, Comanche Maximum Overkill, Sam and Max, and today's flight classic, Pacific Strike. More clues next week for The Zone's Top 10 of 94. When I was a little tacker, the idea of having all the jungle animals at my beck and call was pretty cool. You know, just when the school bully was about to give you a thorough thrashing, you'd whip your pet python out of your pocket and set him loose. The classic Kipling story, The Jungle Book, is about to hit the consoles. Get ready to spank, guys. This is one of the hippest new games around. He's groovy, he's skinny, dig skinny boys, and he's in your face. Mowgli is the coolest brat around. You'll find him just about anywhere in the jungle, wriggling about, hanging off vines, juggling, balancing bananas on his nose and rapping to that jungle bee. If you thought Aladdin was good, you ain't seen nothing yet. This game has very fast and smooth graphics, which have been taken from the all-time classic Disney movie, The Jungle Book. The guys at Virgin have packed heaps of wicked animation along the way. If you've ever played Cool Spot, then you find the gameplay familiar. You've got to collect at least 10 diamonds to get through each level, and remember, you look out for extra time and thumping power-up hearts. When you get to an elephant, spank him, and you'll get your restart flag. The scrolling in characters are some of the best I've ever seen. So watch how our little jungle boy grabs into those swinging ropes and does his best talking to the animals. The sound is excellent, as you would expect in a Super Nintendo, and the challenge is as great as any platform I've played before. Leap behind leaves and crawl into tree trunks to discover the goodies. Check out your firepower, guys. Grab those boomerangs, bananas and some grapes for your blowpipe. Spit at the swarms of bees and cartwheel onto scorpions. Grab that bunch of bananas for maximum carnage and spank the boss. This game has a lot of action and things to do, and the graphics are just superb. If you like platform games and you loved Aladdin, then this is a must. So far, it looks like it might even take out the platformer of the year. Who knows? I give it a 92. It's a pretty easy game to get through, except for level 8, which has the exploding blocks. That's Cal Central. It's addictive and fun, and it gets a 90. So, 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 so. You sound like just the guys to solve our little problem. Walk this way. Besides keeping your wits about you, here's a groovy tip that helps you clear each level and wipe out nasties a bit quicker and easier on the normal game of Super Bomberman. We call it the burning kamikaze death tactic, and you take advantage of your Bomberman's 15 second invincibility at the start of each stage. When you're flashing, drop a bomb and stand next to it, pressing the A button as fast as you can. When the bomb explodes, you'll instantly drop another one, which chain reacts with the previous explosion, and so on. So for 15 seconds, you can virtually dash around the place, wiping out any soft blocks or enemies in your path. Just don't overdo it, or else you'll toast yourself. So. All right, guys, here it is. This is the most amazing cheat. I mean, can you imagine you actually get to fight M. Bison yeah, against yeah. Kano? I think, I think we better give them a chance to get their stuff together. Go and get a pen and a paper. We're going to take a commercial break, and then we're going to come back, and you'll get the cheat. I haven't even seen it yet. Yeah, we, we're dying okay. to do this. Go get a pen and paper after this break, guys. Let's go. The zone. Sunday night at the movie. Stuart Clark is already building an empire at Hyper Magazine, so we thought he was the ideal person to build something even bigger. You're either going to love or hate SimCity 2000. If you're into fast action platforming or senseless violence, then you might not get much out of this game. On the other hand, if you don't mind slow moving and mentally challenging fun, then you really can't go past this masterpiece of strategic simulation. SimCity 2000 gives you the option of playing preset scenarios with aims and time limits built in, or creating your own metropolis from scratch, with the only real limit being imagination. I really can't tell you how addictive and engrossing this game really is. You're always going to have to find out for yourself. And if you're sensible, you'll do it real soon. I'd give it 95. It's a dream.
Jed, I'm here at Time Zone today. We're checking out Daytona. If God was a game, he would be Daytona. Let me tell you guys. Now this game is a lot like virtual racing with just mind-bending graphics. I'm talking seagulls flying over the top, horses trundling through paddocks. Not that you're going to see this here. This is just a standard racetrack. I'm on the beginner's level where you're just turning around Daytona track, right? As you can see, you've got your four screens. You've got your bumper bar camera angle. From inside the car, I'm crashing all over the place. And of course, behind the car, the pole position view made famous by the game pole position so many years ago. The steering wheel fights you as you crash into things. You have to battle with the steering wheel as if the wheels are coming off the wall. Just pulling into the pits here to fix up my damage. My wheels are buckled, rims are buckled, and the uh, front of the car is dented. I just refuse to race on without a perfect car. thing Sega did decide to take into account was that their players are made of all shapes and sizes and so they put in this groovy little device that allows you to bring the chair further back and forward. You know how you're used to using your right foot to brake and accelerate? Forget it. The pedals here, although they look pretty close together, are actually too far apart for you to do this kind of thing while you're actually driving. So you're going to have to just rely on your left foot to brake and your right foot to accelerate. And of course, your gear shift is on your right. We're not in America, we're in Australia. I'm used to using my left hand for a gear shift, so I just decide to drive automatic. It's the easiest way to do things. <laughs> sure. Starwing is not a new game, but it still stands out as a top-notch flight shoot 'em up In the cockpit, the zone's resident SNES experts, Andrew and Amos. Starwing was the game that started the whole FX and DSP chip craze. Hidden way inside the cart, the Super FX chip generated polygons like they were going out of fashion and allowed Nintendo's top programmers to create a fast-moving, realistic 3D world. With the extra onboard technology, it's no wonder that Starwing is such an excellent game. As Fox McCloud, you lead the Star Fox team into battle against the Emperor Andros. Well, ship, the Arwing, is loaded with high-tech weaponry and it's more manoeuvrable than one of those little Mazda bubble car thingies. 360 degree barrel rolls are particularly cool, in the R-Wing that is, not the Mazda. This game really kicks butt. In control of the awesome R-Wing fighter, with three wingmen backing you up, your objective is to reach planet Venom to destroy Andros, a freakish looking evil type, hell bent on controlling the galaxy. It's not an easy task, as your journey there brings you face to face with the most wicked enemies and obstacles you'll ever see on the SNES. The 3D polygon graphics are brilliant, and the action's fast and totally in your face. It gets even better the further you progress and your knuckles will be popping in excitement in a nanosecond. It looks great, the gameplay is fast and challenging and the booming soundtrack and effects help to make Starwing a truly cinematic experience. Play it through the stereo and play it loud. It's gonna be a classic, that's why I'll give it 92. Music is suitably space opera-esque and the sound effects will blow you away. Three Ways to Venom by different planets and sectors will keep you coming back for more polygonomy mayhem. And essential to your blaster collection, this gets a 94. Game Boy owners have been neglected on the zone, and for that, we're truly sorry. Now, thanks to some fancy wiring and new technology, though, we can not only record the games, but bring them to you in living colour. With his pants overflowing with ferrets, it's Timbo. I'm happy to see you boil. Bart versus the Juggernauts. I didn't understand this one, but who understands The Simpsons games anyway? It's fun to play and the graphics are pretty cool. You've got things like skateboard acrobatics, as only Bart knows how, and other challenges that put you to the test. But if you're looking for a really good game, try something else. The Crash Test Dummies, an oldie but a goodie. This game is cool, from jumping off buildings to smashing your car. The gameplay is fun in this one, and it'll keep you going for hours. 
Graphics are cool and the scrolling is smooth in a slow sort of way. Definitely get this one, it's a must. Strike Eagle. Look how smooth the graphics are on this one. You have heaps of different missions to choose from that will keep you in your cockpit for hours. Scrolling is a bit jerky and the gameplay is very simplistic, but it's great fun to play. If you're into flight sims, then get this one. If you're not, get it anyway. It's a definite must on your Game Boy. All right, this is the hottest thing, guys. This is the actual facts that came in on. We haven't even read it yet. This is it. Let's go, Matt. Go. Okay, you've got to have a six-button control pad, you know, as usual with Street Fighter cheats. Okay, now, exactly at the same time as the Mortal Kombat title screen appears, you've got to start pressing your Z and A buttons simultaneously while rotating your D-pad anti-clockwise. Now, your Z and A buttons have to be pressed 150 times. Uh, uh, you got to be kidding. Oh, mate, but it's a good cheat, so don't worry. Um, and then you've got to hold them down until the Street Fighter 2 title screen appears. Oh, mate, this is cool. We're going to go, actually go and do it now. We'll go do it, and we'll come back after the break, and let's see if this thing goes, man. See ya. The Lost Vikings have come to Mega Drive for 50 hours of gripping gameplay. Guide the three Vikings through 37 levels and five different worlds. The Lost Vikings is... <laughs> Excellent! Sega! Compete with up to seven of your friends in Sampras Tennis on Mega Drive. Volley, lob, and smash your way to become the number one seed. Comes with two extra joypad connectors for four-player games. Necessary! Necessary! This was necessary! Where are the rogues? They must be close. Oh, Mega Cow! Here are two for Echo the Dolphin. For infinite life, enter this password. For infinite air, enter Shark Fin. Well, it's time now for the Muddledorf competition. Muddledorf? Nah. Anyway, we had heaps of entries, but most of them were wrong. So we've actually only got a few that wrote down the correct answer, which was, of course, what? A sausage stuffer. He was a sausage stuffer. He's, he doesn't work for the zone, and hopefully he'll never be on here again. All right, let's go for it. We need five people. Just take five. Random. Two, two three, four, five. And these people... One, Sorry, man. Two, but these people are going to be on the screen right now. We have Stephen Freeney from Kilkyvan. Okay, Daniel Rax from Port Macquarie. And of course, we've got Gordon Anderson from Trot Park. And we've got this wonderful person, Peter Gooden from Burwood in Victoria. And lastly, but not leastly, Thatch New Yet from Brisbane, Queensland. Excellent. Excellent. And those. Five lucky people are going to win, if they've got a Sega, they're going to win a multi-tap, a four-player multi-tap from Sega. And if you own a SNES and you're a winner, you're going to get a Hudson Soft five-player multi-tap. One extra person. The all-new virtual reality machine is in Oz, and I'm pleased to say me and Adam, that was both of us, went down to check it out. And here's what happened. Die. I'm gonna make like a fool on national television. You're gonna look like an idiot. And everybody will. <laughs> That's scary. Where am I? A few people at home only knew what you were missing out on. Oh, I got the big one! You all get out of my way! He was almost ugly as you are! My gun's gone! I'm not going to make! Help me out here, buddy! That was fun! That was so much fun! Hey, that was more fun than I had at Christmas time when my mummy bought me a cockroach! Sir, Adam. Yes, mate. Uh, well, anyway, that was virtual reality for you. And it was cool. Pretty cool. I love it. So. All right, we're really sorry, guys. We just went in to punch in the cheat ourselves, and there's actually a second page to the facts with the password. It will work. You just need the password. Here we go. Okay, you've got to type in the letters G U L L I B L E. That, that's gullible, mate. Yeah, gullible. Let's go. Gullible means we've been sucked in. 
Sorry, guys. Well, Coming at you today on The Zone, we have got games Zilch. like... Mate, would you, what have we got there? Would you cut it? Zot, mate. Would you cut it? Zot, mate. Cut it out. Cut mate, it out. mate, mate, I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. We got nothing and nothing and nada and niente and zot and zit and nothing. Mate, what are you, what are you what does that mean? We got no games. None. What are you carrying on like this for? We got no games. None. None. What None about, what about play guides? No, nothing. No reviews? No. No, no, couldn't fit it in. Couldn't fit it in. We're only just don't say. What, okay, so we're going to That's the zone. What are you talking about? What are you going to do? Zone is just a dream. A dream. A dream. A dream. A dream. What are you carrying on? A dream. Nice PJs, man. PJs? They're going to sleep, man. <sighs> a dream. That's lady. Man. Imagine if. Uh, imagine if you guys had seen me, like, in my PJs. My whole credibility would have been shot. I'm going to take you to a place you've never been before. It's a dream. We're three minutes away from home. Uh, <coughs> Everything looking good. 31 seconds, and we're still looking pretty good. Play it. 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 We thought we'd keep what's on today's show a secret, but believe me, it's all about huge. We've got cheats, celebrities, player guides, a preview of Sonic's latest adventure, and games that are so big, even the makers are calling them mega. Virtual World Broadcast TV, the land of the 3D home view of violence. The game show that brings reality into your lounge room. Don't know what I'm talking about? We'll check this out. Mega Race is the latest, greatest car race and shoot 'em up since Chase HQ. As you would expect from the PC CD-ROM, there's tons of digitised video footage. In fact, in Mega Race, there's over 20 minutes worth by Mega Race host, Lance Boyle. And they call their legend Atlantis, the city neath the waves. In the new world of virtual reality game shows, Mega Race is one of the best yet. And although the game concept is rather simplistic, the creators, using the latest technology, have made a basic concept work sensationally. The idea is that you're in the world of virtual reality, racing against the dirtiest load of street scum the world can find. You must reap revenge for all the good guys by annihilating your opponents, thus causing your victory and continuation on the game show. Now don't judge a game show by its host. Although he can be annoying, Lance Boyle does give very useful hints on how to win. So listen up. That's right, listen. His accompanying Lance is full digitised speech, so you can actually hear his disastrous voice, as well as see the video footage. Can you keep up with this level of intensity, tough guy? Look. See, I'd go for one of these myself if I didn't already have a box full. But don't worry, that's why they invented the cutoff switch. So you can just flick past the host and get onto some serious mayhem. 85. The game is incredibly addictive and each race offers something totally new to the racer. The only down are being the annoying tunes and the even more annoying host, Lance Boyle. I give it 88. Oh, this is new. Yeah. Looks nice. Oh, thank you. Car racing tips for Daytona USA. You can actually get higher speeds by using the manual gears instead of automatic. Also, it's easy to pass computer cars if you slipstream or tailgate them. Ease up on the gas because you need less power because they're taking the wind resistance for you. And then, when you're on the straight, move out from them, floor it, and use the extra power to breeze past them. Hey, Mario, let's go and throw a dad in the Monaro to know it, mate. We want your reviews. That's right, you. And you. And, yeah, OK, even you. Just do something with your hair, OK, bros? Just stick your head in front of the family handy cam, hit the record button, and give us 30 seconds of review type stuff on any old game you want. Matt will give you more details in the bus, which is coming up in three, two, one. Now that we know Adam can count from three to one, what we want you to do is send in your VHS or Hi8 or whatever you've recorded your review onto into the I want to be a zone head competition. PO box, something, whatever's on your screen, just send it to there. And if you do a lame review, you'll end up doing Game Boys like Tim. Sucks to be you. Coming up later in the show, we've got the finals of the Blockbuster Video Comp, and as Daryl would say, it's huge. Thanks, Daryl. What's happening, mate? What are they doing? What are they doing, huh? 
We want to know what your fave mag is, whether it be Nintendo Magazine, Hyper Magazine, GameStar, Hyper Magazine, Nintendo Magazine, whatever. We want to know what it is because we're doing a survey. That's right. So send what you reckon or your ideas or whatever you want to call it on the back of an envelope to the zone my fave mag thingy and make sure you spell thingy with capital letters and the address is P.O. Box something 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 somewhere in New South Wales. It's on the screen so don't worry about it too much. They're at it again. What do I think they're doing? What? And of course, coming up later on the show, we have the Celeb Games Wiz shootout competition type thing. Today we've got Gordon Tallis and Nicole Cusack, who's a New South Wales Australian ru uh, rugby league player. No, she's not. She's a netballer. The other bloke's a rugby league player. And down there with all the action will be Gibbo, Daryl and Cipelli. So stay tuned for that one. Until then, that's the buzz and I'm Smartly and you're not. What's your name? Uh, I mean Muttley. That's better. It's not over, is it, Dad? I'm not your dad and uh, it's not over. Good. Zone, zone, zone. This is the news. World Cup USA 94 has kicked off on Mega Drive, and the fans have gone wild. It's as exciting as being there, but you control everything in the ultimate soccer game. Everything but the score. Tired of monkeying around? Then Jungle Book's for you. 15 levels of awesome animation and cartoons in this huge jungle adventure. It's gonna be bigger than the movie, so get it now. For all the latest hints, cheats, and walkthroughs, call the Seeker hotline on 1902 And kids, get your parents okay first. Keith Lords, Ash. Here's a few helpful hints to getting through level two, the cellar. The object of this level is to activate the switches to open the sliding doors. The word activated flashes and floats around the screen when you've hit one. The switches are pretty much located in easy to reach places, so just be patient. Keep kicking and retrieving the ball as you run through. Being careful, of course, of the falling rocks and animals. Once you've reached the final sliding door, a lift will take you to daylight, to suburbia. Attention ah! ah! breaker. <laughs> Expect to see a heap of Flintstone games later this year to coincide with the release of their blockbuster movie currently doing big biz in the States. It won't, however, be the first time Fred and the gang have hit the gaming scene. The Mutster and Bev caught up with the clan hot on the trail of the lost treasures of Sierra Madrock. Everyone's favourite fat man, Freddie Flintstone, and his best buddy, Barney, are back and making an appearance in a major way on the SNES. Now, this game is set up slightly different from most other video games we see these days. That is to say, it plays like a good old-fashioned game board, or board game, however you want to say it. You roll the dice and move to a spot on the board. Now, each point on the board is a different platform level, which you must complete to keep your spot. So, the idea for the game is good, but what about the gameplay? Well, Bev, you tell him. OK. When you complete a level, you receive a number between 1 and 9, and that's to fill the grid. When you fill three numbers in a row, you receive a bonus and so forth. Pretty cool. You visit icons on the board in order to catch the dude with the map. Places like the amusement park is where you pick up things like hearts, clams and extra men. You can stop at the cafe to refill your energies and the dinosaur points on the board refer to the baddie type character in this game. And he's like just a big chimp and doesn't offer very much of a challenge really. Hey Bev, what are the heart points? Funny you should mention that. The heart points are bonus levels where you get as many one-ups, clams, stars etc in a set amount of time. Okay, cool. Now, overall, the graphics and scrolling are pretty cool, and the gameplay and style of the game is seriously smart. But the sound... Oh. So whack on your fave CD when you give this one a bell. I reckon 78. What about you, Beth? I reckon I like it. Just practice your running and keeping away from Wilma and Betty, because it's not pretty if they catch you. 81. I won last week. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. No, I didn't. I must have been a bad boy. Three, two, one, mullet! It's TV and why look warm to you, but I'm freezing. Why? <laughs> because we're in beautiful downtown Lincoln. That's it. But okay. it's warm in where, Motley? In here. Because that's the Games Wizard Superstore. And let me tell you, inside we have got 
Oh, barrels, celebrities, heaps of people. And warm air conditioning. And let me tell you, it could be your name inside that barrel. That's right, your name. So let's go. Find out. Let's find out. Let's go, guys. Check it out. Well, I don't know about you, Mark, but I'm feeling pretty warm and groovy inside here at the Games with Superstore. And if we don't pull out two people right now out of barrel, I'm going to have a complete head case. Well, you are a head case, but I pull out two people anyway. Oh, you're a lovely, okay. lovely man. <laughs> this is true. Coral Martin of Innisfail, Queensland. Nicole Cusack, the Australian netballer, part of the team that actually thrashed. Trinidad Tobago oh, oh, oh. will be playing for you. And a huge man. I'm talking about the St. George full-timer and Queenslander, Gordon, Gordon Tallis. He oh. is playing for Corey Smith of Liverpool. Corey. Well done, mate. Let's well go check him out. Yes, let's go. Let's go. Bye. Links. Let's go. Okay, what can you say about Big Gordo, Chapelli? Oh, he likes eating his supper in a sub. He's a cabaret supper star. And he likes eating big suppers, Gibbo. <laughs> Good one, Chapelli. I think he's a super bloke. Yeah, supper. Well, thanks for coming down. This is him, guys. This is Gordon. The man of the match from last week. Huge game, mate. You must be happy with that little yeah. performance there. Yeah, mate, uh, it was pretty good. Unfortunately, we lost to Brisbane, but uh, we're looking forward to playing Balmain tonight. Hopefully. So you should kick some butt. In fact, you should kick some butt against Nicole over there, who's practicing. But, uh, man, we've had a bit, bit of a good, good jam on this here. We've had quite a few practices, and he's looking pretty good. You feeling confident about this game? Very, very confident. All right, well, you're playing for a guy called Corey Smith. I think it's a guy. It might be a girl. Who, who knows? But whichever way, Corey, rest assured, this man is going to win for you. Okay, how about a few words on young Nicole? Oh, she attacks goalies, mate. Uh, she dislikes people who spit and her parents are swish. A bit like you, Gibbo. Actually, I'm finished, mate. Finish with you now. Rack off. Oh, that'd be poor little snooker, mate. <laughs> oh, mate. We're here with Nicole. She's an absolute netball legend, aren't you, Nicole? Sure. She is. She's just been overseas, haven't you? Um, yeah, we went yeah. to New Zealand. Yeah? How'd mm -hmm. you go over there? We won two and lost one, but we won the series. Ah, see, that's what counts. Be those coolies, mate. Oh. <laughs> All right, so have you had a good season? Yeah, we've just played against Trinidad and Tobago. You yeah, thrashed them, we've seen yeah, that. Yeah, mm. we had four test series against them and, and whipped them. We're going to wrap it up there and we're going to get into training and we're going to kick some serious male rugby league But What a threat, what a challenge, it's huge. I'm excited, I'll tone it down. No, I won't, it's enormous, it's huge. Games with Superstar Challenge soon, the zone, be there. He's rough, tough and aggro, as any self-respecting devil should be. And to make things even more exciting, he's Australian through and through. Back on the Mega Drive for the second time round, it's Taz 2. Okay, do you remember the original Taz game with spectacular animation, very difficult gameplay and what seemed like the never-ending amount of levels? Do you? You do? Well, prepare yourself to go through it all again as Taz 2 hits the shelves. TAS 2 is definitely the perfect sequel and keeps the TAS's addictiveness intact. There are guest appearances from many of TAS's friends that add sensational buzz to the game. The difficulty and animation won't let you down either as you actually interact with many of the background graphics. I guarantee that TAS's reputation will stay firmly intact and that by the time you have completed the game, you too will be hoping for TAS 3. I give it an 87. Hey you with the funny hair, got any change? Don't go changing a thing. You'll be sorry. Because when we return, we'll nail you to the floor with a preview of Sonic's up-and-coming Christmas release and Twisted on the 3DO. That's us. That's you. That's... Way cool. That was worth waiting for. Zone! This week, we've gone through the GameStar cheat file yet again to bring you Aladdin on the Mega Drive. For this level select, you need to pause the game and press ABBA, ABBA to skip to the next level. You can't get to the bonus levels this way, though. Also, to access the debug mode on Aladdin, you simply press A, C, A, C, A, C, A, C, B, 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 B. This automatically gives you a level select and invincibility. You also have some options down the bottom that give you freeze ability. This freezes the screen for as long as you hold the start button and a map view with which you can scroll around the entire level with the control pad. We interrupt this broadcast for a world exclusive. Is this big or what? I don't know, is it? Ma. Eh, cool. Bev? Uh, excellent. It must be then. Anyway, Sonic's got a new game out. Yep, that's right, a new game that also allows you to jack into some of his other adventures. Wild or what? Bev? Yeah. Ma. Hmm? With all the drivel, here's the Bevster. Well, here it is. 
the latest in the ever-continuing Sega saga of the infamous Sonic the Hedgehog. But man, has this one got a surprise to it or what? As a game in its own right, it stands up to the high quality we've come to expect from Sega's Sonic games. It adds another platforming hero to the Sonic library. That's Knuckles. You know that pink thing you saw in Sonic 3? But now, you can play him in Sonic and Knuckles. Now it's still on ROMs, which means the game isn't completed. Keeping in mind that we haven't seen the cart yet. We hear the finished version though will be nothing less than awesome. So check out some of this gameplay. The beauty of Knuckles is that this pink echidna flies. So you can now reach those rings you never thought possible and those platforms you could just never jump to, as he also climbs walls. The levels in Sonic and Knuckles are the coolest sceneries I've seen from Sonic yet. The idea behind Sonic and Knuckles is this. After defeating Robotnik and his death egg, you find Sonic watching Knuckles exit a secret room. Now you enter and find the altar of the Master Emerald. Now for the surprise, it's world first technology. On top of the cart, there'll be a port to plug any of the other three Sonic games into. That's Sonic 1, 2 and 3. You just plug it cart to cart. Now you can play as Knuckles, that pink punk social misfit echidna from Sonic and Knuckles, for any of the selected number of levels from all the previously mentioned Sonics. So to sum up, an awesome game in its own right, a killer add-on to Sonic 1, 2 and 3, as well as world first technology for under 160 bucks. Yeah, fine, but when are we going to time zone, huh? huh? We'll head down to time zone real soon. But first, I want my 3DO and I want it now. But I guess so does every other game head in the world, right? Well, the Oz version of the system is due out in November, so we're all going to have to wait a little while longer. But until then, here's Andrew with an update on the much acclaimed machine and a review on a sick and twisted kind of game. Now that Panasonic have perfected a PAL version of their 3DO machine, the official Australian release can't be too far away. And although it's had a slow start in the States, the 3DO still looks like it's going to be a very hot system. All I have to do is drop the price, in America it's now $499, and keep churning out good games. Games like Super Wing Commander and Twisted are starting to show just what all those processors under the 3DO's hood can do. The graphics and sounds are like nothing you've ever seen before, and as a game, it's a totally original concept. In the game show of the future, you and up to three friends take control of a bizarre group of characters and race to the top of a twisted helix. On the way, you'll hit challenge squares, bonus squares, or maybe even land on the wheel of torture. The challenges range from straight trivia questions to rearranging people's faces. It's surreal, it's wildly funny, and it's the ultimate party game. Gee whiz, it's off to the gangs whiz. <laughs> Gordon's prepped and ready, and so is Nicole. She's Nicole's very, very vibed Gordon, on this game. I, I saw her before. She's smoking, Sorry, smoking golf. It's true. It's true. Okay. So the vibe is, you get a mulligan each. So if you, if you have a bad shot and you don't want to get penalised, you get one mulligan. It's shot for shot. One hole. Whoever comes out on top at the end of the hole. Go to up first, one wood. He's hit the ball long. He's a big man. He's hit it long. They're happy. Nicole now. That's gone right. Where That's not it? good. It's in the woods. It's, it's lost. Tree. They found it. The caddy chooses a club. That's well done, okay, caddy. She's out on the fairway. Nicole now for the green. Seven iron. It's long. It's on the green. It's on the green. Great shot. Gordo needs this now. Gordo needs a big shot. He's chosen every club in the world. And he turns out a nine iron. He hits. He strikes. It's long. It's right. It's short. Oh, dear. Oh, too confident there. Too confident. Again, for the green. Oh, he's duffed that over the top. Bad shot, Gordo. Desperation comes in. He needs the green. It's up. It's it's on. It's it's short. It's short. Nicole for a win. Four foot. Oh, she's t oh she's missed. Oh dear. Doors open. The big man putts. It's left. He's missed. A tap in for Nicole and a win. A happy lady indeed. We have a winner. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Congrats to our winner, Nicole. And you have one for our home viewer in Innisfil in Queensland named Coral Martin. So you get 600 bucks worth of stuff for your home console. Pretty happy about that. And well done. Once Thank again, you. well Thank done. Thank you very much. I'm Bye -bye. sorry, Corey, Bye -bye. okay? We didn't win, and I'm going to have to take the full rap because we had a mulligan to use, and we didn't do it. So don't get sore, Gordy. It's all my fault. So Thanks, sorry, Gordy. Man. Okay, that wraps it up for another Games with Celeb Shootout. Don't forget, keep those entries coming in to Daryl. Huge Games with Celeb Shootout. Post Office Box 27, Willoughby, New South Wales, 2068. Huge. And there's more to come. Huge. So, so, so. You will love this.
A few months ago when this was released and Daytona wasn't out, this was mind-blowing, this game. Absolutely mind-blowing. I got on this and I just went, wow, this is a very, very cool game. But now, you know, it's a little bit, I don't know. What do you reckon, Amos? Okay, well, um, it's... A $2 game is a bit cheaper than Daytona, so it's still pretty good value. And uh, yeah, it's still kind of pumping. I know it doesn't have the multiple views and everything, but um, I mean, hey, it's okay compared to a lot of the other ones around. Polygons are basically the way to go. You really need all the all this texture mapping stuff to get that real in-your-face vibe going these days. 747 Jet there, man. <laughs> the gear stick's on the right-hand side again, which is a little bit of a pain if you live in Australia, which most of us do. And, uh, hey, check it out. I mean, they've got the seat that moves back and forward, which is, which is oh. a nice little novelty. I lost! I lost! It's a close second. Well, it's kind of close. You can't link them up, so you can't race yeah, each other. True. It's got a few problems, like the steering wheel definitely not fighting it was definitely a drag and uh the virtual screens are kind of cute every now and then i do like to flip through those so it doesn't touch daytona but it's, it's a good game in its own right yeah check it out check it out here it is what we've been waiting for the finals of the blockbuster home video comp here by sega